One of the major aspects of Moat Marine Laboratory's Red Tide Research Program is trying to understand factors that control the initiation and the development of red tide blooms. We have a tremendous cooperative program right now with the state of Florida, Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, and with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, utilizing <clears throat> the expertise from each of these agencies focusing on the Florida red tide problem. One of the challenges that we've had over the years is determining or being able to detect when and where the red tide was beginning and where it was going. Uh, so far, we've been able to put scientists on ships and uh, send them out to monitor. What we really need, though, is a real-time, continuous monitoring system. Uh, Dr. Gary Kirkpatrick, recognizing that need, invented an instrument that could do just that, and that's called the Brev Buster. Beautiful. These gliders, these autonomous underwater vehicles, are propelled by buoyancy. They don't have propellers. They don't have motors in them. Uh, they just use buoyancy. So when we put them in the water initially, they're going to sit at the surface floating with their, with their nose down. And when the, it's time for them to start their mission, they draw in a little bit of water inside the housing. There's a little piston in there that brings water in. And that then makes the whole instrument heavier than water. And so it starts to sink. But with the nose down and those little wings on it, the sinking motion actually makes it glide forward, glides down towards the bottom. And it has an acoustic altimeter. It senses where the bottom is. So when it gets close to the bottom, it pushes that water out, makes itself buoyant again, actually changes its um, moment of pitch, which means it brings its nose up, and then with the wings on it, gliding up towards the surface. So it makes that, that cycle back to the surface. And it does that continuously. It just, when it gets there, it draws in a little water, starts down towards the bottom. When it gets to the bottom, back up to the top. So it doesn't actually use uh, battery power for propulsion, which makes it possible for it to uh, go for a long time, uh, up to 30 days uh, on its own out in the, in the Gulf waters. It, of course, it, it looks like a torpedo because that's the best shape for things to move through the water. They're painted visible, high visibility yellow, so that um, hopefully they're not going to look threatening. There's nothing in them that is dangerous. Um, and we've identified them or put lots of logos on them. Uh, one of the things we're hoping to benefit from is that we won't have to go out necessarily on a boat looking for red tide uh, if we're, we're trying to sample it. Um, we'll have these in the water telling us places that are likely to have it in places that are likely not to have it, as well as the satellite imagery that tells us some of that type of information too. So we're hoping that the, the boat work is going to become more efficient and we might not have to be out there as long. That's one of the hopes is that we'll be able to be out there essentially 24 hours a day, seven days a week with these uh, instruments looking around uh, with the idea that we might catch a very early stage of a bloom been one of the, the holy grails of, of research on red tide is to see what the conditions are right at the beginning of a red tide event. Um, without knowing that, um, it's very hard to pin down what the trigger uh, mechanism is.